I may have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew with this comics clinic. I'm cutting it super close with Camp NaNoWriMo right around the corner. So when it comes to reverse engineering, I forgot one minor, blatantly obvious aspect of comic book writing. So let's talk about it. Hi, Stax McDuck here and welcome back to my channel. For Camp NaNoWriMo, I will write a comic book and this comic clinic series is just about me trying to learn and, and understand the medium of comics so I can create a competent comic book. Today for Comics Clinic, I want to talk about what I call reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is when you as a writer take a piece of media that you want to create and you break it down to its bare bones, only to reassemble it once more. The purpose of reverse engineering is to act as an exercise to help familiarize you with the industry standards that are associated with the media that you're trying to produce. It also gives you a sense of professional rhythm and timing to your writing. Reverse engineering occurs in two parts. You have the story breakdown as well as the script replication. Now the story breakdown is simple enough. All you're really doing is taking note of where the act breaks occur as well as identifying major plot points, i.e. the inciting incident, turning point one, turning point two, climax, etc. You're doing this to see how many pages it takes in written media or minutes in film media it takes to get to those points in the story. Your goal from there as a novice writer is to structure your story in a similar fashion. For instance, if you're reading a graphic novel and it takes 12 pages to get to the inciting incident, then with your graphic novel, try to get your inciting incident within the 12 pages, give or take a page or two. As stated previously, the second portion of reverse engineering is script replication. With script replication, what you want to do is use proper industry format and your own words to recreate what you think the original script might look like to the best of your ability. This is a lot easier with film and television because film and television screenwriting have a pretty universal industry standard. This isn't really the case with comics though. With comic scripts, things are played a lot more loose and fancy free. It's also easier with television and film because you're more than likely to find the scripts of your favorite film or television series online as opposed to comics. Although I did find a couple of websites with some comic book archives uh, that you can check out, I'll link them down in the description box below. If you're curious about the specific sources I use to learn how to write comics, uh, be sure to check out my previous Comics Clinic video. I'll leave it up here in this little card above. When I decided I wanted to do this Comics Clinic for my Camp NaNoWriMo prep, I thought that the story breakdown portion would be the easiest by far. I've done enough story breakdowns to be rather proficient at identifying, defining plot points. However, I kind of forgot one of the aspects that's kind of a staple to comic books. Serialization. I'm used to dissecting self-contained stories and when I looked at each of my comics, I was regarding them as one solid story unit. So do I look at the art globally and identify inciting incidents and other plot points? Or do I isolate individual issues and do like a micro story breakdown? For the time being, seeing how I'm in the time crunch for Camp NaNoWriMo, I'm probably just going to break down the stories on an issue to issue basis, like micro level. However, I still need to understand how arcs unfold over the course of several issues. Thankfully, my boy Dennis O'Neill has come through again in his book, The DC Comics Guide to Writing Comics, with a principle I can use to dissect and better understand arc development, and that is through the Levitz paradigm. But that's a topic for another video. I'll probably go deeper into the Levitz paradigm when I tell you guys about my Camp NaNoWriMo project in detail. Uh, so be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss out on that upcoming video. 
with the story breakdown handled now on to the script replication. By the time you've completed this exercise, you should have something that looks like this. I decided to use a page from Gotham City Sirens to demonstrate how I replicate a script. Let's just take a page at random. Oh. There we go. Pisky tabs. A bit of context to the page. Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman have decided to team up. However, Harley and Ivy have an issue with Catwoman that they want to resolve before solidifying the team. Remember, you're attempting to use industry standards as best you can in your own words to describe what it is that you see. So, here we go. Panel 1. Harley cradles a woozy cat woman into a seat. Poison Ivy stands over the two of them. Ivy, a little secret we want to know for a long time. Something we deserve to know. Panel two, Poison Ivy leans in close to Catwoman. Catwoman's brow furrows with resistance. Ivy, and if you're really serious about this all for one stuff, you'll be glad to tell us. Panel three, through Catwoman's yellow tinted perspective, Poison Ivy gazes at Catwoman, her eyes hungry for the knowledge Catwoman possesses. Harley looks down her nose at Catwoman. Ivy, who is Batman? Or something to that nature. It's totally not the best, I get it. It's not like I spent hours trying to create the most captivating prose. This is just to give you an idea of what the exercise entails. Hey, Editor McDuck here from Days of Futures Past. Like adult, I totally forgot to include some terminologies that's important for writing comics. So here's an excerpt from Mark Neese's book, The Art of Comic Book Writing, that provides and explains some common terms. Thanks for your patience. Now back to the video. For my actual reverse engineering exercise, I'm going to use Brian Lee O'Malley's Snot Girl, issue number one. Pretty much because it's the shortest comic I have, and as stated previously, I'm strapped for time trying to get ready for Camp NaNoWriMo. I'll probably post excerpts of the exercise I did on either like my Twitter or my Instagram. If you're interested in joining me in reverse engineering this issue, I put a link down in the description box where you can get a copy of Snot Girl issue number one. Or you can just reverse engineer whatever comic you want, or any media you want, in fact. Anyway, that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. I hope you found it helpful. And if so, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.